Uh, uh, my nose. <clears throat> Here we go. We're good to go. The camera's on. Oh, I've got wings all of a sudden. <laughs> what? What was that? You might be asking. What wasn't that? Okay, I sprouted wings, and I was just trying to take off into the romantic horizon. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to Thugged Out Thursdays, your TLG weekly commentary. Listen, before we get started with today's topic, quick shout out to our Thug of the Week, Gamertag, he knifes. Now, personally, I think that's a pretty cool gamer tag. I feel like every time you knife somebody via perhaps Call of Duty, <laughs> they're a little annoyed with your gamer tag. Pretty cool. But this young adult definitely deserves a shout out for, you know, being able to maintain focus on his education, which is really hard to do with so many distractions in today's society, especially for young adults. I mean, we've got video games, Netflix, social media, all sorts of things that we can indulge ourselves in rather than focusing on our schoolwork. So congratulations, man. You set a great example for other young adults and you do deserve a shout out. Now, if you yourself wanna get the thug of the week or perhaps nominate one of your friends or family, all you have to do is fill out the form on the contact page of thuglifegaming.com. Let me know what makes you a thug. Now, getting into today's very necessary topic of debate, all right, we are talking about the necessity for a World War II genre video game. Now, if some of you have not been familiar with gaming culture uh, for a while now, I'm happy to inform you that the World War II genre of video games was at one point the most sought after and successful genre in gaming. However, a sense of repetitiveness and the release of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare brought their success to a halt. And since then, they haven't made a comeback. But before we talk about why I think that comeback is about to happen, all right, let's take it back to the beginning and really discuss this era of epicness. So the most successful time period of World War II genre video games took place between 2002 and 2008. Now, a lot of gaming activists have come to believe that the onset of this success was caused by the movie Saving Private Ryan, which released in 1998. Now, what sets this movie apart from its World War II predecessors and in my own personal opinion, all of the World War II movies to come out since then is the extreme sense of emotion that the movie evokes. Now, we all know that World War II is arguably the most emotionally intense time period in world history, and with that comes the ability to produce very creative but extreme storytelling. So what happened was you had a lot of game developers that are sitting there watching the movie, eating their popcorn. Maybe they're on a date. Maybe they just pulled the whole one arm around the shoulder move that we all know is extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> anyway, they're, they're watching the movie and they figure out this idea that you can take the very extreme fictional aspect of video games and tie it in with the extreme realism of the World War II genre. Now, when you combine these two aspects, what you have essentially is pure magic. Yeah, right? <laughs> now, the first game to release with this sense of pure magic was Medal of Honor Allied Assault, which came out in 2002. It was then followed by the first installment of Call of Duty in 2003, and then followed by my favorite World War II series, which is Brothers in Arms, with their installment of Road to Hill 30 in 2005. Now, all three of these games have two things in common. First, the genre in which they are taking place, and two, they're the first games to capture and fully represent that sense of extreme emotion from World War II that we were just talking about. Now, this ultimately led to their success, selling millions of copies, but following the release of these titles, game developers made a critical mistake. They failed to cover about 99% of the World War II story. See, what they were doing is they wanted to cover the most brutal, most widely known and popular battles of World War II to create a stronger sense of epicness within their game. 
It kind of be like if you were walking into class for your first day at school and your teacher says, oh, good evening, students. Uh, today, we are learning about the invasion of Normandy. And you're like, hey, you know, you and your friends get hyped up. We're excited because we've heard a lot about this shit. All right. And so you have a great class. You go home, maybe study it up a little bit. You come back the next day, and when you walk in, your teacher says, oh, oh, good evening, students. Today, we are learning about the invasion of Normandy. Wait, wait, what? N what, huh? <laughs> right? Okay, we just learned about it. You know, after you learn about something or you play something for the first time, okay, you might go home, look over the notes, keep it up to date in your head and your memory, but you want to move on and learn about something else. So you can kind of see how these titles would start to become very repetitive. They focused on the sheer massive casualties of some of the more commonly known battles rather than allowing for creative script writing for storytelling and character development and some of the smaller ones. Now, you might be expecting that the World War II genre of video games had a very depressing ending, but in actuality, they didn't. They went out with a bang. Now, as you know, Call of Duty Modern Warfare came out in 2007 and was the top selling game of the year with over 7 million copies sold. It actually almost beat out Halo 3 for Xbox sales. However, since games were in development before it released, there was a few more World War II games to come out, my favorite of which is Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway that released in 2008, and following that, Call of Duty World at War, which ended up selling over 11 million copies. There has been a few World War II titles to come out since then, such as the Wolfenstein, Sniper Elite, or the Red Orchestra series, but none of which have lived up to the full potential of a World War II game. So, but why am I making this video? Why do I think think right now is the perfect time for a World War II game to come out. Well, when you look at the market demand of game genres, you'll notice that history does repeat itself. People have become tired of your modern day shooter and are much more looking towards your futuristic warfare. Titles such as Titanfall, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Deuce X, and Black Ops 3 are now hitting the market in order to please fan demand. But just like genres of the past, I think people are eventually going to get tired of it and in my own personal opinion, I think that this genre is going to be the quickest to come and go just because of how picky us as gamers have become. But that ultimately leaves the door open to something new, something refreshing, perhaps nostalgic just like a World War II shooter might be. But that's it for this video, guys. I really felt passionate about bringing up this subject because I can't wait for another World War II shooter game to come out. I'm hoping that Brothers in Arms is going to be the next World War II shooter. Uh, there is rumor that they are creating a new game, in which case I will freak out about. And you heard it here live. Okay, quote me on this, so you know I'm not some bandwagon fanboy jumper. All right, I said it here live, damn it. I love Brothers in Arms. <laughs> but leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought of the video. Click that thumbs up button. Share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to the freaking channel already, it, well, I thought we had something. You know, I thought we, you know what, never mind. I'll blow out the candles. You will not get any whipped cream. This is over. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm freaking out of here. Alright, you know the deal. Keep living that life, baby. Cause that's what thugs do. Take it easy, guys.